Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish, and I am your trainer for this AZ104 Azure Administrator Associate Examination course. We are at the module two. We are going through learning about Azure governance and compliance. Within that module, in this video, I am going to talk about role-based access control. So let's have a look at the high-level view on what are the topics we are going to see on this video. We're going to start with the role-based access control, what it means, and how can you define the definition and the assignments. What's the main difference between Azure RBAC and Azure AD administrative roles? So it's very important us for to understand what are the key differences between these two. Then RBAC authentication and what is RBAC roles, etc. Every time I explain a particular concept. I will take you through where you can see that in the Azure portal as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Access management for cloud resources is critical function for any organization that is using the cloud. Role-based access control or RBAC helps you manage who has access to these Azure resources. And what can they do with these resources? And what areas they have access to? So RBAC is an authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager that provides fine-grained access management of resources in Azure. So let's understand what can I do with RBAC? So I'm going to give you some of the example what you can do with RBAC. You can allow an application to access all resources in a resource group. Another example could be allow one user to manage virtual machine in a subscription and another user to manage a virtual network or allow a DBA group to manage SQL database in a subscription or Allow a user to manage all resources in a resource group such as virtual machine, websites, and subnets. So let's understand some of the concepts for RBAC. Security principle, role definition, scope, and assignment. So what is security principle? Object that represents something that is requesting access to resources. Example, user, group, service principle, and manage identity. The second one is role definition. Collection of permissions that list the operation that can be performed. Example is reader, contributor, owner, user access to administrator, etc. And then the third concept is scope. Boundary for the level of access that is required. Example is management group, subscription, resource group, and resources. And finally, assignment, which is attaching a role definition to a security principle at a particular scope. So users can grant access described in a role definition by creating an assignment. Deny assignments can currently read only and can only be said by Azure. So what are the best practices for RBAC? Using RBAC, you can segregate duties within your team and grant only the amount of access to users that you need to perform their job instead of giving everybody the unrestricted permission in your Azure subscription or resources. You can allow only certain action at a particular scope. When planning your access control strategy, it's a best practice to grant users the least privilege to get their work done. So, this following diagram shows a suggested pattern of using RBAC. Each role is a set of properties defined in a JSON file. The role definition include name, ID, and description. It also include allowable permissions, actions, denied permissions, and scope for the role. So in this example, the owner role means all actions, no denied actions, and scope. So what about role assignment? A role assignment is a process of attaching a role definition to a user, group, or service principle in a managed identity at a particular scope of purpose of granting access. 
So the access is granted by creating a role assignment and access is revoked by removing a role assignment. So you can select a user and remove a role assignment. Or you can simply add over here to add a new role assignment for a user. So this diagram shows an example of a role assignment. In this example, the marketing group has been assigned the contributor role for the pharma sales resource group. This means that the users in the marketing group can create or manage any Azure resource in the pharma sales resource group. Marketing users do not have access to resources outside the pharma sales resource group unless they are part of another role assignment. Notice that the access does not need to be granted to the entire subscription. Roles can also be assigned for the resource group as well as an individual resource. So let us understand what is the main difference between Azure RBAC roles versus Azure AD roles. If you are new to Azure, you may find it little challenging to understand all the different roles in Azure. I'm going to explain the following roles and when you would use each one of those. The first one is Classic Subscription Administrator role or Azure Role Based Administrator control. So, to better understand roles in Azure, it helps to know some of the history. When Azure was initially released, access to resources was managed just by three administrative roles Account Administrator, Service Administrator, and Co Administrator. Later, Role Based Access Control for Azure resources was added. So Azure RBAC is a newer authorization system that provides fine-grained access management to Azure resources. So RBAC include many built-in roles and it can be assigned to different scopes and allows you to create your own custom roles as well. To manage resources in Azure AD, such as users, groups, and domains, there are several Azure AD roles. At a high level, Azure RBAC roles control permissions to manage Azure resources, while Azure AD administrator roles controls permissions to manage Azure Active Directory resources. This is the following table, which compares some of the differences. Please note that classic administrative role should be avoided if you are using Azure Resource Manager. When it comes to RBAC authentication, RBAC includes many built-in roles and can be assigned to different scopes and allows you to create your own custom roles. To manage resources in Azure AD, such as users, groups, and domains, there are several Azure AD administrative roles. So this diagram is a high-level view of how the Azure RBAC roles and Azure AD administrator roles are related. So do you see how Azure AD admin roles and Azure RBAC roles work together to authenticate users? So let me take you through Azure RBAC roles first. Azure includes several built-in roles that you can use. The following list are the four fundamental built-in roles. The first three applies to all the resources. So the first role is owner. Owner has full access to all resources, including the rights to delegate access to others. The service administrator and co-administrators are assigned to the owner role at the subscription scope. This applies to all resource type. Contributor can create and manage all types of Azure resources, but can't grant access to others. This applies to all resource types. Then again, reader. Reader can view existing Azure resources. Again, this applies to all resource types as well. And last one is user access administrator. User access administrator lets you manage user access to Azure resources. So this applies to managing access rather than managing resources. So let me show you the rest of the built-in roles. So I'm in my Azure portal. 
So let me quickly show you what are the built-in roles available for a user. You can go under roles and this is where you would be able to find all the built-in RBAC roles available within the Azure subscription. So you have the owner, contributor, reader are the three main roles we talked about and then there is user access administrator. The rest of the built-in roles allow management of specific Azure resource. For example, virtual machine contributor role allows a user to create and manage virtual machine. But the built-in role doesn't meet the specific needs of your organization. You can create your own custom roles as well. Azure has introduced data operations that enable you to grant access to data within an object. For example, if a user has read data access to the storage account, then they can read the blobs and messages within the storage account. All right, so now we have completed the module three. Module three is all about governance and compliance. And in this video, we talked about role-based access control. So in the next video, we're gonna check our knowledge based on what we have learned on the previous module. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.